switch this over. Now I'm, I'm going to put both of you up here in just a second where you see those green. J Johnny, that's how you're going to look all day. You're going to be the green <laughs> box. And... <laughs> So that's what it's going to look like in a couple minutes. Okay, so uh, you, so yeah. you can also take that screen I and make see. it full screen. <coughs> and um, I need to turn this down. Oh yeah. To put on my headphones. Eric, can you hear so, me? So can still not, still have not heard Johnny I talk at all. Okay. Not here. How in the world do I give you guys? Oh, maybe. No, I've got that. Where's the settings here? <laughs> uh, stream near PC. Share this Johnny, screen. do you know sign language? <laughs> <laughs> Me neither. <laughs> well, that's good. That's I not like, going to work. I like multiple smart Alex. That's a <laughs> we haven't said any. I haven't said anything. Eric's probably fucking around, but that's Eric. Ooh. Oh, it might have been through your mic. I can't I hear can barely all. hear him there for a second. Jesus. Okay, please, both of you talk for a little bit. All right. One, hey, Eric. two, three, four. <coughs> <coughs> One, two. Okay. Okay. Check, check, check. check. Talking for a little bit. Okay, uh, let me go talk, over. Talk, talk. It also didn't give me the option one. to listen without earphones. Oh. Should I go out and come in again? I'm going to try. See if... Um... Okay, go ahead and talk. Okay, here's me. I'm talking. Eric can Still talk do not hear him. Okay, well, here not Eric hearing him. See his lips moving. I gotta, let me put on my headphones and see if I can hear. Yeah. That's the problem. Oh. It was easy with I just had Johnny and Yarrett when I just had Eric. Oh. One, two, three. Okay, so you, do you get okay, both of us or just. In. Can you hear me, Don? Check, check, check. I can hello, ask hello, something hello. right now myself, I think. Please? One, two, three. Can you hear anything? One, two, you three. can hear all three of us? Okay, then I got to get... All right, thank you. That's very, very helpful. And I, now I just got to get them hearing each other. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> it's my wife calling from Florida going, I can hear all three of you. Oh. So now <laughs> I just have to get you guys the right feed. And then if Maybe I we should all call her. Should we go to yes, Florida we then? Call my wife. Yeah. That'll be good. She, she will I'm translate to for us. Yeah, hold on. Uh, hold on. Let me switch out so that people. Yeah, it doesn't matter. I mean.
Okay, right. so we're testing this for everybody who's on the live stream. And uh, we are verifying because currently my two guests cannot, they, I can hear both of them, but they can't hear each other. So that means they uh, are, are, so we're, we're testing something here. So Johnny, can you go ahead and talk, please? Yes, I can. Indeed, I can. Always I can talk. Born I still do it. not hear Johnny. Yeah. But Eric can't hear me. I can see him nodding his head. I suspect Johnny's no still idea that I'm talking. I can say whatever I want about the guy. <laughs> no, you guys are not hearing each other, but that's no. something on my end. So the tech guy can't figure out in real time here why we can't hear each other. So, um, hmm. Yeah. All right, Johnny, there, one more time. Yeah, okay. Is there anything I can do with this, uh, on my screen that would do it, or is it all I on yours? I don't think so. No, it's um, it's something on my end because it's all coming through me. And Scarlett Solo, so that's right, that's right, I'm that's looking, right. I'm, looking I'm just looking at the settings here, here to figure out uh, what's going on. If, and then, Eric, can you go mm -hmm. ahead and say something? Hello, hello. All right. So I am here today. Hey, you know what I could do? I could... Put my phone onto the YouTube. Oh, I could come up with oh, that. Maybe I can yeah, hear Yeah, try that. Uh, also, <laughs> well, it's the, 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 if you do put your phone on the YouTube, the thing that happens is you will get a delay of about 20 seconds-ish from the time we talk here, and that is just totally disorienting. Okay. okay. So what I'll do, okay, so for those of you who are watching this live, um, <laughs> I'm going to start this here. Hold on a second. I'll start this. Let's see if this other one, yeah, okay, that's connecting to live video. And uh, let's see if that goes live there. Okay. I'm going to do one more here. Uh, oh, do that. One, two. Yeah, maybe. And Eric, you can't hear me, right? No, Eric can't hear you. But you guys can both hear me, correct? I hear you. I can hear. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to just make one phone call. So for those of you who don't know, um, for, the, for those of you. All right, Lisa, can you just tell us uh, the, if you can hear, um, if you can hear all of us again? All right, all right Lisa, I'll say oh. something, then Eric will say something. Yeah. Hello, well, hello. Ooh. I yeah, heard now it. Now you see my phone ringing. By the way, this is the phone. This is, this is old <laughs> school. This is how us tech guys do it when we're in trouble. Hey, Lisa. Can you verify you can hear Eric and you can hear me? Yep. You can? Okay. Yep. All all. Okay, you can hear all y'all. All y'all. All, all right, thank all you. So what I'm going to have them, so watch this, okay? So here's the thing that, that so I want to, uh, for all everyone who is watching, this stream is live, and, um, and, and as soon as you add complexity or something different, life gets interesting, and sometimes tech stuff doesn't work. So I do two things. Before I do any of this stuff, I watch... Uh, today I watched Craig Ferguson. I watch something to lower my stress level when I'm trying something new. Uh -oh. I don't get, I first, like everybody else, I'll get stressed by it for a couple minutes. I get bothered by it. I'm, I'm kind of concerned. But, you know, once you're going live, once you're in the situation, then you go with it, and then you fix it later. And so what I'm going to do today, so I've got Johnny Heller, who's narrated over a 1,000 audiobooks, who is the actually... He's one of the meanest guys I've, I've worked with in a long time, uh, but he's consistently kind of mean to me, so I've gotten used to it. And then we also have in the uh, Eric is here uh, representing Dreamscape, but also, so I'll, I'll have him talk about some things in a second here. And they can't hear each other right now, and it is totally 100% my fault. We tested this yesterday individually. I talked to Eric, and Johnny and I had tested. And that all worked. And dumb old me assumed that, oh, if I can hear each of them, then they'll be able to hear each other. And it adds a level of complexity. Now, here's the big takeaway. When you do anything new technically, sometimes something doesn't work. And I can get frustrated about it for about five minutes. I allow myself five minutes of frustration. And then I kind of say, OK, OK, I'm missing something fundamental. And I will go back and review and life will be fine. It may take me a day to figure it out. It may take me two minutes. And as soon as I'm not under the pressure of going live, like you might be in front of somebody performing. And when that happens and something doesn't work, the biggest thing that I have to do is settle down and say, okay, plan B for now, do the best I can, and then revise it later. 
and we all go through it. I don't care how long I've been doing this, I still have days where I'm frustrated by the tech, where I'm frustrated with myself for not being able to learn faster. Now, Johnny, do you ever have a, a student or a, somebody who's upset that they're not learning this all faster and having it just work the first time? You give them an instruction mm -hmm. and then they don't execute it the first time. What's their attitude about that? And what's your <laughs> thoughts on, on that sort of thing? Should they get it the first day and the first time they try something new? Yes, I don't deal with dunderheads. They get it right away or out they go. That's how it is. That's the way it goes. I explain it once, and that's it. Cool. Okay. No, well, no. Yeah. No, that's not, Well, yeah, Eric, have, ask Eric to hold up his, uh, his uh, left hand. Eric, hold up your left hand. Oh, he see, did it. See, see, he messed up in class, and I busted his finger. That's a kind of, <laughs> that's a kind of, so, that's a kind Yeah. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah. And that, he's showing you. It, that's how he yeah. feels about that, Johnny. That, yes, <laughs> yes. He's doing that very well. Yeah. So, so, so no, 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 no. Here's the thing. Something like this you're dealing with. I mean, here's Don with this really, this is totally new to me, certainly. And, and to Don, we did it, uh, what's this, twice now, perfectly. We brought Eric in, the third guest. Um, and, and the problem is the communication between Eric and I. He has no idea what I'm saying right now. Um, so I can really let loose on the guy if I want, but uh, but the point is, yeah, we'll work through it, and then maybe we'll have a conversation with just Eric for a while, and I'll back out, or maybe I'll read the chat. Uh, Don said I could try it on my phone, but there's a delay then of 20 seconds, like when the CNN reporter goes to the guy on on scene and goes, "So tell us what's happening." And there's well, what's happening is, and there's that delay, which is uncomfortable. So. I, I will just muddle through, and Don will be the middleman on this, and and um, it, uh, and that's the only way it's going to work. So, if you have questions for uh, Eric, ask him questions for me. Ask him, and, and Don will just feed us the questions, and we'll do the and ask questions of Don, and we'll do the very best we can. And hopefully, by n next time we do, Don the Wizard will figure this out and make it all perfect. Yeah, and so I'm seeing the chat here. Now, the chat is not coming up uh, yet in the uh, – uh, uh, so normally the chat would come up. So I'm just going to read. So, Stephen, you know, you saw we're live, and you can hear all three of us. So that's super, super good. And Zita saying, good time to take a deep breath. Absolutely. So uh, – and, and here's the cool thing. Uh, Eric's sitting there going, I don't hear anything from Johnny, and we're laughing at him, and we're making fun of Eric, and Eric is just thinking, well, you know, whatever. So, Eric, welcome. Thank you for joining us, number one. Thanks for having me. And, and representing. And I have a, I've, I've been, I looked at your bio, and uh, it's pretty crazy. So, first off, how'd you get involved with this whole thing? How did you, why in the world should anybody, uh, what is Dreamscape doing? But before we do that, what did you do? that got you involved with this audiobook stuff. Yeah, so I was uh, I went to school for uh, to be an engineer to to record uh, what I thought I would get into bands, uh, you know, cool stuff like that. Not nerdy audiobooks by any means, but um, I did a whole bunch of stuff because I right right off the bat I was like okay this is actually not for me after all but I really wanted to use my degree and find something audio related and I kind of jumped around I did broadcast television some other sort of audio adjacent things and then I was moving back to the Toledo area where I was where I grew up where I was um, born and grew up and. Uh, and kept looking for a job, couldn't find anything. And then one day I came across this company called Dreamscape that was looking for an engineer to man one of their audiobook recording booths. And I thought, hey, maybe I can do that. And uh, got into it, fell in love. And, and uh, you know, my position's morphed since then. That was about eight, almost eight and a half years ago. And what do you uh, do now? Uh, so, one of the things I did read about in your bio, okay, uh, that, that, yeah, uh, you have some kids, and you've been around a while. But what I was totally puzzled by is why don't you like animals? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How many? Well, you <laughs> my my kids love animals. Okay. Um, <laughs> I I always uh, you know, and my wife doesn't like to say no to them, so we end up with more and more. Uh, every time I turn around, there's another animal hopping around. Uh, you, wait, uh, but wait, no, just, they're just great, so you know. and it's great learning, and really great teaching responsibilities and things for the kids. And and we have, uh, uh, you know, we. 
you have a we, bunch, we do have you? a pretty good a pretty good collection at this okay. point. Okay. Well, just so you know, if you have the last name Barnes, you seem to collect animals. Uh, we have an 80 pound dog, and we have five cats, and then an outdoor. And we took on some ferals, whatever. Anyways, we have right. a lot, and yes, with kids. And then my kids leave. You'll have this experience later as you, uh, you know, reach that senior age where I'm at, where the kids all leave and they leave all the animals with us. And so now right. we have a whole, you know, flock of animals without uh, any. And Johnny, you have, uh, you hate I, animals I, too. No, I just have a question. I, I love uh -huh. animals. I have a quick question. I have YouTube on, uh -huh. um, real lightly in the background here. Mm -hmm. Is it interfering with anybody? Uh, somebody in the chat, go ahead and say, uh, uh, I've got the chat live now. Because that way I can hear Eric a little bit. I okay, don't know if cool. it's coming through and bothering people. Uh, I mean, it is a delay, but. Yeah, it, it's probably going to be a light one in there, but you know what? So that now you can hear no Eric interference, talk about Barbara his says. and uh, yeah. friends. Eric, if you want to, I went on my iPhone and, well, you, you can't hear me. Yeah. You tell me I went on my iPhone and, and I okay. put it on very low. So Johnny put his and iPhone on delay. very low and he is hearing the, the, the chat and uh, he can see us live. And even though it's delayed, he can hear your questions, Eric. So, so I, th I can hear what Eric has to say. I think it's the least. funniest thing. We're, yeah. we're a, I'm this high tech guy and I'm telling people to use their phone there, there we are. and go to plan <laughs> B. And by the way, when I do video chats, I do video chats virtually every day of the week, uh, Zoom. And every once in a while, we'll have an audio problem on one end where we can't connect. What do we do? We pull out the phones and we start talking on the phone. And, uh, you know, so it's a very low rumble, no problem. Okay, well, thanks for being nice about that so people understand. And uh, Eric, so back to you. Okay. Um, how did, if, 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 so I have a question for you that will be if I'm a new narrator ish and I want to get on your radar. I mean, I don't even, you know, like, where do I start? How do I, how do I, so how do I reach out to you? Do you, what's, what's, wh how should I do that? We get a, a fair number of inquiries through our website, which I don't necessarily recommend. I get to them. Um, they pass through several hands. It can take, uh, it can take a little while to go that route. And then also it doesn't carry quite as much weight as, some of the other ways that I'll recommend now um, get involved with the APA, uh, get involved with Q and a sessions like this, get involved with uh, workshops and coaches. And all these are kind of paths to a more personal and customized um, introduction. Uh, it's, it's really the best way it shows me you're doing things to further your career um, not just like going around to publisher websites and going to their info box. I have a question. Do uh, you remember where you and I met the first time? Johnny Heller's workshop. Okay, so Johnny Heller. So, but this is the this is the point. So, uh, uh, you and I met at Johnny Heller's uh, New England retreat. I believe it's last year or the year before. I can't remember exactly which year. But here's the weird thing that happens: that I meet people at workshops. I kind of say probably. So you got to correct me if I'm wrong. I say. These other people may be great today or may be just beginning, but they are serious about their craft or more serious than most people. They're not just watching YouTube videos. They're trying. And does that make any kind of impression on you when you are, because you attend, I mean, they, you were there, uh, you know, as a guest to talk to people about working with publishers. And what kind of impression do you have when you meet people at Johnny's uh, event? Yeah, I mean, every, everyone has people going there are going there to work on something and i've seen people who have been narrating for years at these events and people that are brand new and haven't even tried to reach out to a publisher and for either person they're there to get something and that really lets me put a lot of it, it holds a lot of weight you yeah. know you're, you're you care about your craft and you're and you're going to do better i know i learn a ton at these things um I went for a while kind of here in my own little bubble uh, at Dreamscape and just this is the way we do things, la, la, la. And then I started attending these, and it's so eye-opening hearing from other narrators and other producers. Everyone kind of has their own way of doing things, so you just you just keep going till you find what works for you. Um, okay, and, and so now let, let me go. Now, now let's go back to that question again. So, so you meet somebody at the workshop or a workshop, 
and they, they, they're starting to develop just a little thread of a relationship with you. And it's just a tiny thread at that point because you're going to meet at one of these workshops, uh, let's just say 100 people. <laughs> you go to some other event and you meet 20 people, 50 people. How should they then start developing that relationship? Because I, I'm going to guess because this is how it is in the music business when I was a young guy. The people that did the best not only were good at their craft, but they were very good at establishing and maintaining good relationships. How do I start that process with somebody like you, and how do I maintain it? Yeah, I mean, hopefully we're at these, you know, depending on what the event is, maybe there's time for one-on-one -on -one and we get a chance to, to chat a little bit. Um, at the very least, generally, you'll get a good email that's a nice direct email. Um, and that's a great place to say, hey, maybe you remember me. I was the one with that, you know, the messed up finger we talked about for a little bit. Whatever it is, you, uh, you know, we're, we're people. How do you, how, what do you do when you meet someone and you want to establish a relationship with them? You just, you know, be a person. Uh, send an email, reach out on socials. I'm, I'm usually, you know, LinkedIn is a great place to start there. I don't do a lot of like messaging. I think I saw someone post that, but yeah, definitely let's connect on LinkedIn and um, that's a great place to start. Uh, so the question, has anybody ever done something that instantly caused you to be kind of turned off by them to where you kind of thought, oh, Don, what a rear end. I'm not, I, I don't, I, I don't think I will interact with him in the future. Is there anything somebody could do that would, quote, offend you or has somebody? Well, I'm sure there is. Um, I think Johnny can't hear me still, right? I'm sure he's come close a few times. <laughs> Johnny's I'm come kidding. close to you offending said, right? everybody. I just wanted to razz him. You said you guys were talking about me. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I mean, I don't think anyone really has. <laughs> I've gonna... had people get kind of a little pushy, it's like, hey, we connected late. a week ago. Why haven't you sent me a book yet? I'm like, yeah, that takes a long time, you know. Uh, we only have so many books. So just be respectful. But, no, I've never had anyone do anything atrocious, uh, luckily. And then what's the average? So if I contacted you, do you want me to send you... Uh, 25 different samples of every character I can do and my voiceover reel and uh, what types of things would it be appropriate? Do I put in links? Do I put the full things in there? Do I call you on the phone? Do I? Yeah, <laughs> best to put as many attachments as possible, right? <laughs> call every day to confirm you got it. No, again, you know, being respectful. We get a lot of emails, a lot of people every day. Um, People let me know they have new samples. It's best to link. Always, actually, not best to link. It's it's mandatory. Just send links. Don't send attachments. Um, a million things can go wrong there, uh, and I've heard that from other publishers. I know a lot of times people have preferences, but that is one. I pretty consistently people do not want links. Um, Wait, people and, do want yeah, links, not attachments. Do I have that correct? I'm sorry. Yes, links, not attachments. Okay. No. Okay. Yeah. And then um, should I label? And, and yeah, and like it doesn't need to be all that often unless there's something really, you know, you're really proud of. In this case, I say, yeah, definitely let me know. Hey, I got this great review. Uh, um, someone put send brownies. That's, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, but but like, you know, once a half, once a quarter is like the most, I would say. That's kind of a lot, but you can even slim it down unless you have something particularly exciting. So once a quarter, once a uh, once a quarter is a proc is probably something that's reasonable. Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, for for us. Um, again, other you know other other publishers, other producers are probably going to have different different guidelines. There, I've heard people say, "Don't ever send me anything. <laughs> send it here." You know. Uh, so, so they so somebody you might just kind of got to learn and build up that. So if I've met uh, you at an event, then I probably should send a follow up email. Uh, and say hello and uh, try to say, hey, I was the gray-haired guy and you and I discussed something because I'm going to guess you get overwhelmed with the number of pe people that you talk to that now I can't remember somebody two weeks uh, ago, oh, yeah. unfortunately. How about you? Oh, yeah, at those big events. Oh, boy, yeah. Uh, after APAC, I'm lucky if I remember anything. But it's amazing. People do recall little bits of information, and they will pull that back out, and I'll go, that's right. Okay. I remember you. Okay. Um, uh, I've seen people do like little gimmicks. Uh, the one I can't, and now I can't remember her name, but she had would wear this 
orange hat. She did it in the quick pitches before, and then she was walking around APAC with it, and it's on her website and everything. Like, that's really solid branding. That does help you stick out, but you, of course, you didn't have some the chops behind that. Right. Um, oh, you mean you, you mean you can't be like me in an, an empty shirt? Uh, yeah. you, big hat, no cattle type thing, the old Texas thing. Um, that could work. So how do I... How, <laughs> How do I how do I have the chops, and what do you consider chops? <laughs> uh, you know, we can read. I guess really the only chop you need is the ability to get through an audio book and deliver it to somebody how they want it. Um, doesn't mean that you're good, but yeah, when I say have the chops, I do mean um, deliver a good quality product and. Um, you okay. know, that will be revealed, and that morphs over time. And Well, let me ask you this. So let's say I send you a link. So I'm brand new to you. What would be the average listen time that you have to something that I have sent you? And, and yeah. Go. So most people send, like, their website and say, hey, you can check out the demos. Here's a link to my demo website. And I will click through a few of them. Um, I'm not listening to the whole five minutes, like, ever, but... Um, I'll listen, get a good sense, and 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 generally, unless unless there's a a big problem, but om- almost always, I would say we're very happy to have you come in and join our database, um, where I just tell people they can come in, put their name, their email, they can tell us about themselves, and then when we go to cast, we have now over a thousand narrators. We can go and try to find just the perfect person for each book. Okay, so uh, explain that. I don't. I didn't even know you have a database. So does that mean that they go to your site and uh, there's a place they can put in and they tell what styles they do? Or I mean, should I first off, I, I, when I go to that database, should I tell you I do everything well? No. <laughs> Very good question. No. No. <laughs> say what you do well. <laughs> so do you be wanna... as honest as possible? Ask your ask someone else whose opinion you respect, and you know we'll be honest with you. Hey. How good is my English accent? Should I have it be my first sample? Probably no. Um, and it's probably worse than you think. Uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, but no, our, it, it, it would have to be provided by one of our producers. It's not a public link. We don't just let anybody get in. There is an amount of gatekeeping. Again, we want to make sure that you're in the industry giving this a good shot, that you understand what would be asked of you if we chose you for a book. Okay. Um, that first book can be really tricky with somebody because you don't know. Are they going to hit their deadlines? Are they going to give me a really noisy audio? Are they going to not punch and roll and didn't know what that was to tell you that they don't do it? Right. Um, so we give a link, and it asks a lot of questions from, you know, what's your name, what's your bio, what genres do you like? Um, do you use pseudonyms sometimes? There's – there's we quite a bit of info and, and I always tell people when I send it to them or I, I, I try to you know be as honest as possible and, and then share as much as you're comfortable sharing and that's gonna give us the best idea of who you are so what type of experience do people are you looking for when you so uh, l- let's back up I, w- I want you to confirm this for us essentially I'm somehow gonna meet you and then I establish a little bit of a relationship I might send you one or two demo links that probably you're not going to listen to five minutes, so you want me to send something and highlight the thing I do the best. Is that a reasonable summary so far? Yes. Okay, and then if you like those couple things that you've heard, uh, then you might invite me to put something in the database. Is that what I'm kind of hearing? Yeah, yeah, that's... Okay. Sure. And here's I have a question about first impressions. I should be sending you something absolutely raw, fully produced, what I'm capable of putting. And do you want me to have a professional one done, or do you want me to have done it in my recording space that I'm going to use for you? So, yeah, if you're, you know, if you're putting demos up on your website and saying you can record from home, I would, for me, I, I want to hear what, you know, your space sounds like, and it should be polished for a demo. Um you know, that's your best foot forward. That's your first impression, especially when reaching out. So what you do best up at the top, if you've got 10 samples, lead with your the best thing you've ever done in your entire life. That's what I would recommend. 
Um, yeah, but yeah, I, I, Raw, there's time for Raw later. After, you know, your first book and we go, okay, now we want to hear what we have to deal with when we go to edit. Then that would be a time maybe we'd request Raw if there were any concerns um, or we've never worked with you. Yeah. Okay, so put your best foot forward. Uh, have something fully finished to make the impression of I. So that, in other words, would this be a good summary? You want to hear how they act. And then the tech stuff should be almost transparent and be strong enough that it does that it distracts you or makes you feel terrible. Or uh, what, uh, what would turn you off real quickly if you heard something? First off, since I know you have an engineering background, if the audio quality is, is weak, uh, do you, is that a, a what, what happens then? Well, I, guess it, I guess it depends. I mean, you know, if it's someone that doesn't have a home studio, well, then I guess they're, they're in, a, in, a, in a booth. I've never really come across one where I listen to a sample or a demo where I've heard one and I go, wow, the audio quality on this is just terrible. Uh, surprisingly, I've never really come across that, that, at least not in my memory still. Maybe it was that bad I've just blocked it out. But No, that's good. Um, that's good. That means people are doing the right thing. And, and you yeah, know, yeah. It, the, the whole idea of the tech is not that who cares about the tech on one hand. It's all about getting that to where that's transparent, and then people are paying attention to your acting. The rest of it, exactly. I, I, I don't want to say it's irrelevant, it's relevant to get it to the point where it's transparent to anybody who's listening to it that that's not something that's distracting them. So I would expect everybody that's doing that. Um, so Rebecca asked a question. Uh, would you recommend a raw sample clearly labeled on a narrator's website? So I'm going to go ahead, uh, Eric, and you're, if I'm going to summarize, and then I want you to say, yes, no, you're an idiot. Or you can say that <laughs> either, either way. Uh, you, if I understand, don't necessarily want to hear 100% raw. Your first impression should be something that's actually fully produced, ready to rock and roll. Am I correct? Yeah, I would say definitely lead with that. If you were going to put a raw one up, I've seen people do this where they go, this is a sample of my studio. This is raw, unfiltered. This is me talking quiet. This is me yelling. And they'll kind of go through this whole... I don't know if it's a standard thing. I've heard a very similar thing multiple times, and it might be more commercial VO people are doing this. Um, but I've seen it, and, I, yeah, if, if that's labeled, put that down at the bottom. This is a sample of my studio. Make sure that that is very obviously what you're doing here. Say it in the audio. This is me showing you a sample of my raw and processed audio. Um, but, no, if you're trying to, to hook someone in, yeah, polish it up, put it at the top. Okay. Johnny, you have any thoughts on that as far as people's demos that you're seeing across the different – You do you, they give them uh, – put their best at the top? Is it labeled? Well, what, what, are you, what are you recommending to people when they're doing this stuff? Yeah, I'm, I'm glad to, um, to say a few things about it. Um, what Eric is saying is not just uh, true for Dreamscape, but true across the board in my experience with almost every publisher – First, the, the idea of a, let me wait, let me turn this off because I can hear me and it is disturbing. Yeah, bring that way down. Okay, so um, the idea of a demo, and, oh, by the way, just, just a, a little uh, a tech thing. Every once in a while when Eric was speaking, I heard, boom, I heard his voice boom through loudly. Just so you know, I don't know if that makes any difference, but I didn't, nothing clear, but it, I could hear things. So just letting you know. Thank now, you. in terms of the demos, Eric's right. Y you want to put your best foot forward, your best hitter leads off. So whatever. Whatever you want to do, if, it, you're, if your genre is lit RPG or, or erotic or romance, anything, whatever you want to do, whatever you think you do best is your first demo. That's the one that almost every publisher goes to. You don't need a six-minute piece because no one listens. I'd say demos should be a minute and a half to three and a half, basically. Now, every publisher will have a little bit of different look, but basically you want anywhere from three to seven to eight demos you need a fiction, a nonfiction, and a dialogue. Simple as that. You know, under the umbrellas of fiction and nonfiction are a whole bunch of different options. Pick what you want. But you can have five, six, seven. I think my wife, Joanna, has about 15 demos because she wants them. She changed them all the time. So some people like that. But someone like Eric's going to listen uh, just for a minute. Listen to a little history now. Hey, can Johnny do dialogue? Hey, Johnny says you can do Australian. Is that there anywhere? So that sort of thing. If you claim you can do accents, have a demo with some accents. And if it's 
a dialogue thing with accents? We don't need the narrative that leads the dialogue to lead off with a dialogue. In other words, if you're claiming that I can do this wonderful British accent and you have a male, female, you know, doing RP uh, accents, well, swell. But don't make me listen to the narrator introduce the scene because if that's as far as Eric or anybody has time to listen, they're not going to get to the part you want to show them. So the idea of a demo is it demonstrates what you can do. So show them. Okay. You know, just show them. So that has to be on top. Then, then the idea is um, in terms of the raw audio, if you want to do raw studio sound, say raw studio sound and just have yourself. Here's me doing raw studio sound. A lot of people don't need it because if, if Eric likes what he hears from Dreams, he'll say, listen, I've got a project. Would you audition for or I want to give you? We have to check. your. They're going to check your studio sound. They're going to. They're not just going to say, do it. You turn in 15 hours and it blows. It's not usable. That's not going to happen. Right. So there's a lot of things that come up here. So the demos certainly need to be um, clearly labeled. No one cares about the name of the book. What you want to label the demos as is the genre, um, male, female, MF, dialogue, action, thriller, humor, whatever the heck it is. Make it clear because that's Eric wants, or science fiction. Eric says, can you do science fiction? Bang, there it is. So I don't care if it's Jules Verne or whatever. It doesn't make any difference. Just want to know if you can do it. If it's lit RPG, label it lit RPG. Then Eric knows you have you can do it. And if you don't do it well, don't make that your demo. Okay. So Eric, I, I know you couldn't. I don't think you could hear most of that. But Johnny was saying that he really thought people should be clearly labeling their demos and making sure at the top, it's labeled with the uh, if if it's if they're doing a British accent. Don't set up the scene. Hi, it's a sunny day. All that narrative can be left out and start with whatever they're trying to demonstrate because I think you assume that I can read and narrate as the narrator part. It's doing the actual acting and voicing <coughs> and that sort of thing. Is that correct from your point of view? Yeah. And how much time <laughs> do I have to hook your attention? Uh, you're going to listen to the average one, 15 seconds, two and a half hours? Where are you going to? If there's something weird, I have turned it on and been like, oh, wait, I don't think we're getting off on the right foot which sounds scary but um yeah i have turned them off after just a few seconds uh I'm like why don't start there i the big one i see and i kind of mention it was that like people their first three samples are british and i'm like i thought this person's american this person is american why are your first three samples british okay uh but yeah i agree i don't care what the i, I could kind of hear i was following along um I don't care the name of the book. You don't have to say your name before everything. I know who, what your name is because I'm at your website or or you've submitted this to me, right? Mm -hmm. um, that's the main thing. You, you're, what are you showing? This is my fiction demo. It should be a decent book, and you start out at a strong part where you get to show me what you're trying to show me, which maybe it is the narrative because that's important, just as important as a dialogue. So maybe it is a narrative. Maybe it is a male-female back and forth. You want to show me how you handle... Um, different voices, both, you know, different gender voices. If it's accents, yeah, don't make me wait, you know, two and a half minutes in, into the middle of a five minute demo um, to get to the, to the, to the Irish accent you said you were going to show on that. Um, yeah, doesn't, and they don't need to be long. I think I heard him say that too. It doesn't need to be eight minutes, just a couple minutes fine, really. Uh, so would you rather see me do uh, three uh, one and a half minute uh, demos than to have uh, a 10 minute demo that kind of tries to showcase everything I'm doing. And it's. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Uh, especially a after we're established and I'm just going there to try to find can, can they really do what they say they do? Or uh, we'll get this. And I think this is again another people who, who started out maybe not in long form narration and they'll send this like demo reel with all these different voices and they're fun and there's music going on and there's all this crazy stuff and, and that's fun and I can kind of get a sense, but it's not super helpful. Um, someone's going to spend about, you know, eight to 10 hours with just your voice. Uh, we don't need a bunch of characters. We don't need a bunch of music and sound effects. Okay. So yeah. keep it simple, but keep it toward what, I mean, most audiobooks are not audio dramas. And I think if you were right. casting for that, then you would, you would end up going through a whole different process. And first, people need to make the contact with you and get in doing, quote, straight audio books. And then uh, is Dreamscape even doing the audio drama stuff? 
Uh, we've done pretty close to it, mm-hmm. not quite to the level of um, some of those like audi- uh, Audible originals. But we ha- we have done a few. We've done some kind of live here in our own studios too, uh, with multiple people talking, adding in sound effects. It's just a lot of fun to get that sort of a uh, theater playing off of one another performance. Wait, you bring people uh, but in we don't do for a lot that, of, right? You did, you did make that. I'm sorry. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. That over talk both of you. So first question. So you have a studio that uh, on occasion you will bring some people in. And Johnny, have you participated in that kind of thing? I participated in that kind of thing, not for Eric. Um, generally multicast, if you, like in New York City where I am, you can all get the actors together in a, in a specific studio. Um, I know that Eric did um, produced uh, Paul Rubin's direction of Macbeth, um, which was one that we all did it from our studio, and it was it was. I still think it's a remarkable, remarkable project. It's a wonderful uh, telling of Macbeth with multicast uh, Scott Brick, Dion Graham. There's so many wonderful actors. Just a Cat uh, and uh, and we all did that, and Eric produced that. But we were all working from our home studios. Okay, and then Eric had to put it all together, or he had someone there put it all together. That's a that's Eric's a tricky man. thing to do. That is not trivial to make that happen. He's and, a genius, uh, a damn genius, I tell you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Tim asked a question here. So, um, and I actually, but I, so this will uh, go to Eric. Uh, you know, he's been producing music for many years, and then. <coughs> so is there a benchmark demo? Um, my guess is it's a, it's really your end books. But uh, what uh, what would you do? You have anything that you that you really? I, so Johnny just mentioned the Macbeth thing. I imagine that's a pretty good uh, pristine quality thing that you're pretty proud of. Is that correct? Oh yeah, that's that was just a lot of fun. Paul was amazing at. I mean, this was during COVID. I I don't know if. Johnny said all this, but it, nobody could be together really. So everyone was, he was having to, to work with one person and then move on to the next. And uh, I think we had, he had a couple of the parts read together, but that I really owe all that to him uh, holding that whole project together. He even, I did the edit. I heard you kind of mention that. And I did do the edit and he called me up and he's like, can I give you some notes? And it's the first time. And it was a wonderful experience. Uh, he just walked me through, and we listened to the thing together on the phone. And he said, okay, right here, can we tighten this up? Can we do this? Um, which you would think might be annoying <laughs> as, for, for, as for an editor. But it was actually really – it, it, it was great to see his process and get inside what he was thinking of. Uh, that is, yeah, absolutely one of my favorite projects we've ever done here. Okay. Um, and what's the name of that and, again? And I, uh, the Tragedy of Macbeth. The Scottish plays, I think. But yeah, Tragedy of Macbeth. There's quite a few versions out there, but we're the ones with all the. Uh, I mean, everybody was it Johnny, Simon Vance, uh, Dion Graham. Uh, I'm gonna mess up her name. Katja Mauser. Maybe Johnny knows. Um, uh, Paula Parker. There was just it was an all-star cast. It was great. And okay. um, it's good. I think people need to hear. So it's also an example where the world is probably going when they can and that's that if your home studio is strong enough and you've done enough homework to get your space in great shape uh, a lot of the publishers would like to have the option as you mature to cast you in situations where there are bigger casts and there are more people but they're doing it all from home and then combining it if your stuff is uh, weak in any way if your acting is not strong if your tech isn't strong they're going to have a tough time with that uh, but uh, if your communication isn't strong, which is a really big one, okay, we've had we've had the situations before. Maybe it's a dual narration, and they'll go, one person will reach out and go, "Hey, uh, you know, I'm going to play this character this way, and this character this way, and this character this way," and the other person goes, "Oh, I finished last week," you know, without any contact. Hey, you're you know, if you're collaborating and you have crossover and or even just pronunciations, even if there's no crossover and <laughs> you don't know if a name should be. I don't know, Sarah or Sarah. Right, um, right. And plus, if, if I'm reading 100 talking. miles an hour and uh, Johnny is reading nice and slow the way he usually does, I mean, appropriately paced, and I'm reading 100 miles an hour and you have no clue, it's going to sound not like we're in the same room if one of the performers is 
like I think one of the performers should send something to the other performer, not only talk about it. I think it, you know, I'm right. going to do my first paragraph or six or maybe the first 20 minutes and send it and make sure, all right, let's put this together and verify. Johnny, well, how do you handle that? In, in, in a, uh, I'll get to some of these questions as well, but in a multi-cast uh, project, I believe it's incumbent upon uh, certainly the principal actors, if not all of them, if if I if here we three guys are in a project and and um, and Eric is saying well doing Johnny voices and then Johnny's got it so in other words we need to know how he's playing them so that when Don does Johnny's voice it, there's similarity so in all the characterizations you need to know how you're approaching let's if 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 someone's giving yeah you know, Rebecca a uh, um, uh, uh, South Carolina deep South or something voice and and you're playing her from Brooklyn that's a problem. So there needs to be a discussion of how you're playing it, and hopefully you're basing it all on what, what the text gives you. All the answers you need to how to play a character are in the text. Um, so you, just, you need to be in touch, be, and someone needs to be on top. A, a lot of times, in a multicast book, the publisher is generally a little more involved in most Let's say Eric gives me, uh, gives me a book to read. Let, let's, let's, let's demand that Eric give me a book to read. Um, anyway, so I, so, I, so I get the book, and... Um, and he, and he doesn't give me direction. He knows I can do it. But if he's given a multicast, he's got to be, someone has to be on top of how it's going to work. Otherwise, otherwise, it, it's, it's just not a great production. That's why in, for, in The Tragedy of Macbeth, um, you know, Paul directed us. He knew what he wanted. And answer someone's question, the char- I did like eight different characters, almost all of them British, because I, I grew up with a British accent. Um, um, so I have it. So, but it was... It, it was incredible fun, but we needed someone to run to, to run that rodeo. We needed someone to be in charge. Um, and if you're going to do multi-character, you've really got to discuss how you're playing the characters that aren't you. Okay. So I have a you question. Yeah. Uh, it seems to me, if I want to do that type of work, I would be better off starting with a dual a duet, whatever you want. I, I, basically, a couple voices, <laughs> me and another actor from different locations, and and polish and make that process work pretty well before I try. I, there's no way I would attempt, you know, six characters and doing all these other things, all at once. Six different narrators together. It seems to me start with one, two, get that well, working, and then grow up from there. But what? No. You, you, well, you can't because what the author wrote is what you have to play. Okay, but if I'm a if new the author actor, writes, if, if the author writes two characters, then <laughs> that's all you're that's all you're doing. Right, right. I'm sorry, but let's say I want to do more multicast. Yeah. So should should I start off by me and another trying to get one where there's just two people involved rather no. than no no Aud- audition for multicast things and see what you get cast and okay. that's your job. Okay. I I don't think I don't think that you practice with one character and then and then increase the population as you get better. I think you audition. Okay. And and if you're going to audition for multi characters in the cast. You want to be these, then you can audition for, I audition for five, six characters all the time. Sometimes I get two, sometimes I get three, sometimes I get none. Okay. That's that's just the actor's job. <laughs> Eric, so we're talking about uh, how, how I get cast for these things, and should I start with, uh, you know, practicing with just me and one other narrator? I should go and, and, th- and just audition for something, even if I don't, I've never done multicast or I've done, uh, what are what are you, what is your experience usually now for that project you hired uh, some people that have done crazy numbers of books and uh, crazy numbers of characters but what do you think about somebody new getting started mm-hmm. that wants to do that kind of thing so that's really going to depend on how it's being recorded so we have in the past done things i'm going to stay local now because that was a pretty special project um We've done things local here with our local talent in the past where we pulled one person in at a time and we recorded all the parts they were going to get to. And then when all the things were done, we went, looked back and found all the lines we missed because we didn't do it live. And then we brought them back in and finally we assembled the book uh, together that way. And that is takes a long time and I think loses some of the charm of why you would be doing one of these in the first place. Um so we've done another one where we had everyone come in at the same time and opened up a bunch of mics and kind of shuffled people around as needed and were able to direct and record all at the same time. Uh, 
in that case, we actually had several new to audiobook narrators with us because they were very trained theater uh, actors. So in that case, we just had to cover a little bit and kind of keep on top of them, making sure mic technique was right, knowing that they needed to stay still and they couldn't be as big as they were on screen. You know, you don't need to yell. We're right here in your ear. And it translated beautifully, and it, and it worked quite well. You know, I wouldn't set them off on their own to record in, without without direction anytime soon. But we got the performance. So I don't know the way other companies do it, but but for us, um, those acting chops are really what, what came in here and, and good instincts in that way. Uh, we don't do enough of them. I could, I, I, I think I'm... I'm probably not the right person to ask how to get into doing more of those, but those are the skills I think were important for the way that we did the production. Cool. In the case of Macbeth, it was you're, you're just fantastic narrators and a fantastic director, and he was able to get the performance that it seems so cohesive. You never would have known they weren't in the same room by the time we were done with it. Okay, but that that's that requires having a great director and somebody who's who's managing the whole process. And so Johnny. You know, he's he's been fortunate enough to work with great directors and weak directors in all different manners, and then he can navigate within that. So, uh, Johnny, any comments on that before we yeah, move on just, to something just else? Just one thing. I don't want people to get the idea that you, as an audiobook narrator, need to concentrate on dual or multicast narrations versus single actor uh, audiobooks. What you want to do, your demos are pretty much going to be single actor because you don't want to demonstrate somebody else <laughs> and they get the job that you want. Um, so what you want to do is, uh, what happens is, l let's say uh, someone like Eric uh, or or, um, or Zane Birdwell over at John Marshall, or all kinds of people will have a project that's near and dear to them and they'll set it up. They'll say, we're going to do multicast. And in the, they'll say, we need someone who sounds like, or we need this kind of voice, or they'll have, you know, we need Don Barnes to be good at this. So they'll, they'll reach out. Um, once you become, just be, <laughs> be good, and you will be found. Um, you don't. I don't think you set out to do multicast. I do think there are, for example, uh, Pink Flamingo, which is a wonderful thing. There's a lot of uh, romance and slash erotica, which aren't the same things. Um, they do a lot of multicast stuff, lots and lots. And the book is listed as multicast, and you can audition for one or two. There's, there's sometimes just, and and they do that all the time. It's out of people's home studios. So there are companies that do more multicast than others, but if it's a single project near and dear to a publisher's heart, they'll have voices in mind, if not specific people, certainly the sound they, they think they need. Okay. Uh, so uh, I want to know, Eric, uh, if, so most people need to get on your radar before, we're, so let's, let's get away from the multicast and, and to wrap up in terms of, I'm going to go ahead and contact you. Do I give you a great cover letter? I uh, keep it light. I'm going to make sure that uh, I remind you where we met. And if I haven't met you, what what should my approach be? Or is that even kind of, I mean, because you're going to get so many of these unsolicited things, am I, am I kind of wasting my time to come in and cold send you a message that says hey i'm uh don and i i, I you sound like a great guy and uh, maybe we should meet for coffee uh how should i approach that or is it really kind of because you have so many people that you do meet at these events is it worth my time doing that i try to take time with if people say hey do you, do you have time for a quick zoom call um Obviously, I'm in Holland, Ohio. I, going and grabbing coffee doesn't happen much. However, we've had a lot of narrators say, hey, you know what? My, I have some family 45 minutes away. I'm going to be in town. Is it all right if I come by and uh, say hi? And, and absolutely. We'll come in, we'll gr grab lunch if we can or, or whatever. And uh, same thing, yeah, Zoom calls. Is, it's, you know, I try to do that. Uh, obviously, if we were in New York, that would probably be much harder, and there'd be a lot more people. Uh, I'd say, if you're in New York, don't call up the people, you know, publishers in New York, and expect them to be having coffee with a different narrator every day. I'm sure. Right. Uh, <laughs> I think you know. Really, you're gonna know best what kind of relationship you have with a narrator. 
or, or with a with a producer. Um, so read the room. <laughs> uh, okay, so everyone's because that was one of the things I got at the Heller event. As so he says, <coughs> you know, you were there. There were other publishers there. It's that I noticed the thing that was so one one gal. Anytime you had something cool. She thought you should send them a message that said, hey, here's the cool thing I've just done, which could be once a month or once every. And then there were other people that were like, man, if you contact me more than once a quarter, uh, I'm going to be bothered by that. And that's an individual thing. And so, yeah, it's read I the room. I think I heard I someone think. say they would block your email. Yeah, yeah, I, I remember that. I think that might have been said by somebody. Yeah, I won't say yeah. Names, well, it, it's kind of like a date. I mean, well, I'm too old for that. But it, but. If, if somebody blo doesn't want to hear from you and keeps telling you, no, I don't want to go have coffee with you, no, I don't want to go have coffee with you, I don't think it's helpful to keep doing that. Johnny. Let, 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 me, let me throw just a couple of things in in terms of starting a relationship with a, a publisher or casting person and hopefully maintaining it. This idea of coffee, <laughs> for one thing, people <laughs> ask that, that from uh, acting coaches and uh, people all the time. Hey, look, can we have a cup of coffee and you can tell me everything you know? Um, well, no, the answer is no. No, first off, it's I'm worth more than, well, New York cup of coffee is about five bucks. I'm worth more than five bucks. In Holland, maybe, maybe it's maybe it's a buck fifty down there. I don't know. But the point is, the coffee is just, what you want to do is reach out when you meet someone. Like if you go to the New England Narrator Retreat that Eric's going to be at, that's a different kind of way to meet somebody because we're all together. We are sharing meals. I will tell you that uh, Eric will be there, Steve Wagner from Macmillan. We've got some people from. Uh, uh, Spotify, and, and they'll they'll go from one, they have breakfast together and lunch together, and dinner, so you go to different tables and you see people. We have fire, you know, it's like Don, so it's a different meeting than it is at, for example, APAC, and there's nothing wrong with APAC. A thing that's as crowded as APAC was, if you don't know, that's the Audio Publishers Association convention um, that happened, um, that was so crowded, I didn't even go to a single event. If I had, and I didn't know Eric, but I wanted to meet Eric, but I never got to see him. I would send him a note, seeing how crowded it was. Hey, it was great talking to you at APAC, even though I never did. I promise he doesn't remember everybody he talked to. Promise, he promise, promise. You. Not me, not me at all. I mean, if, <laughs> I mean, you got to be careful if you're bullshit. I mean, I am. I'm. I'm sort of known, so you'll know if you talk to me. Um, you know, <laughs> but if you're, you know, if you're someone who's not super well known and you're new. You know, they you could you could you lie a little bit, but when you reach out to these people, all I can say is put yourself in their shoes. How would they? How would you like to be um, talked to, um, emailed? How often would you want email? Because when when an actor emails a casting person, the casting person knows what they want. There's no secret. So what can you do that's going to be different? And one of the things you should do is not contact them. Every damn second with every new idea, every new thought that crosses your mind. Contact them when there's something to say. Right. They know. And also, we said this last time, Don, and I think, uh, I think Eric will bear it out. If, if, if a publisher, casting person is intrigued by you and wants you, it doesn't mean they have a project for you right then. Um, I, Eric likes me. There's no, I like Eric. There's no question at all. He doesn't have a book for me right now. And I give him shit for it. But... When he has a book for me, he knows me. It's right. not like I, I can say, hey, don't forget me. I'll send notes like that. He knows I do. But yeah. when he has a project that's right for me, I know he'll give it to me. And people have to understand that my schedule, my needs are not his and not publishers. Every actor needs to be an answer to the casting person's problems, not the other way around. You can't be another problem because that's how you'll be remembered. Awesome. So, Eric, uh, before we wrap up, I, I, there's a couple of questions I need to ask Johnny here uh, that have come in on the chat. But uh, basically, anything you want – so I, I maybe didn't ask a question that you had hoped I'd ask. Is there anything that, that you should uh, tell people about working with you that they should know that uh, would make their life you know, more comfortable, make them a better narrator, anything you – some wisdom you can impart with us? For, that was for me. Howard. Yes, that's for you. Um, Johnny doesn't have any wisdom, so just uh, we need you. I was yeah trying to follow along on on the phone too and hearing some things Johnny says, and I want to jump in. I just I'm like yeah yeah that's true, and and, and like you said, <laughs> it's not 
he was talking about, you know, he might not have, or I may, he, I might not have a job for you right now. And that's very true. And, and I have tried to, oh, I really want to work though. I'm just going to find something. I'm just going to find something. And that doesn't necessarily turn out well. Uh, the best chance for success for this book that we're doing together is to find the right book. And for some people, that can be harder than others. Some people have a, a great range. Some people are, are very great at a focus thing. Uh, some people are very good at, at a lot of things, you know. So mainly, if, if you're somebody enjoyable, and again, this is where we go back to, like, read the room and spend time. You know, you've, you've, you learn and you, you, you have to cultivate these relationships. If you're someone I want to work with, I promise you, I'm, I'm, that right book comes along, and I know that you're easy to work with and easy to get along with. It'll come there. So that's really what it boils down to. These are the things, and I think Johnny's very good at stressing this in, in the workshops I've, I've seen with him, is this is a relationship. We're not going to be best friends, probably. Uh, I mean, maybe. That could be fun. Who knows? But really, it, it take time. It, it can yeah. take time. And, it, and, and just be good to one another. Be, we're coworkers, really, if you think about it that way. Um, Oh, yeah. I depend on you. You should be depending on me to fulfill my half of this deal. And if we both like working with other each other, we're probably going to make some good books somewhere along the way. Yeah, I, and I know Johnny and I had actually interacted probably two or three years earlier before uh, we ever did anything at, on the same. Like I, I did a workshop with him, but I mean, there th that we knew of each other and we had talked back and forth at least three years before we ever did anything business together and that was because there was nothing that made any sense for us to do together at one point and then so we had developed and you know he's a little bit of he has a little bit of wit occasionally and so do some other people and so that became fun for us so that relationship took time if i had I mean, the, if either one of us, the first two weeks, we didn't, I don't want to say we didn't care about each other. We were all sort of, yeah, he didn't care. Is I get it. <laughs> anyway, it takes time to build relationships, and that's going to never change no matter what business you're in, whether it's narrating or anything else. So, uh, so Eric, I need to ask uh, Johnny a question here that has to do with acting, and uh, but so much appreciate you being here and if you can hang because there may be another question that comes in that, that you'll be helpful with do you can you hang around another five minutes oh yeah cool, cool oh cool. yeah absolutely I'm so here. johnny someone someone was asking because of this this ask anything um how do you approach narration of a female character's voice because i mean i know you're very effeminate yeah uh, how do you handle that how do you think about it what's your mental process and if you're new to it what do you suggest how do i get started with that the first way to handle it is don't think in those terms. Don't think in terms of gender necessarily. If you're doing, if you're in the audiobook and there's, it's a fiction book obviously, and there's um, X number of characters of various genders, or as many genders as, as one is allowed to talk. <laughs> um, so if it's if it's just male female we're talking about, the author has all the clues to the character in the text, and I don't want to do a big acting lesson here, but. The listeners already suspended their belief enough to allow you to be everybody anyway. They know that Johnny Heller is not, you know, Cindy. But when I play Cindy, she's either gentle or sweet or caring or fast or angry, whatever she is in the context of the scene and who she is. I'm playing that character in that situation. Now, I may soften my voice a little bit. I mean, I don't think you know, should talk like this, but there are females who have deeper voices than me and higher voices than me. So, you don't do a caricature, if that's one thing. You play a character honestly and it let and let the situation and the character just be. Everybody knows it's me playing a female in this particular scene. I don't have to, you know, raise my... I don't have to suck helium to get way up there. No one talks like that anyway. Um, it's, it's, it, it just... Just play the scene. Don't... The, the, the audience will understand that you're not that gender. It's okay. But you have to play the scene, honestly. And females don't play female. They play human beings in a given situation. They, they don't, there's no, <laughs> that's just not what real life is like. So I don't need to sound like Marilyn Monroe every time I do a female voice? Is that what No, and I'm getting a little irked that you do, too, as a matter <laughs> yeah. of fact. you got to stop calling me late at night. Yeah. <laughs> 
question. <laughs> that, that excellent advice. And matter of fact, I think the biggest thing about that is that they need to know that the character has changed, and then over time they figure out, oh, that's the gentle your characters one. have to be different. In other words, you know, if everybody can't sound, if this is this is the voice I'm using, this is me. Mm-hmm. Everybody can't sound like this because then there's no difference. You have to find ways to differentiate the character. Um, but I don't believe you differentiate male and female by necessarily just in pitch. Okay. Yeah. Pacing, timing, feel. A, num- a, a gazillion different ways. Okay. So that'll that'll be our acting. One day, one day we'll do. We should do a, a, a session that's just talking about doing some different characters. We'll do that. Um, and then, you know, as far as we've we had some other questions come in, Tim, if you want to get a hold of me, I'll talk to you about the uh, optimum recording levels. And basically, first off, it depends on who you're submitting to. And ACX has one set of standards. And uh, publishers, they want something that's usually going to be somewhat raw. And so, so there's a whole set of answers there that depend on the context of who you're sending something to. And happy to talk about that, and uh, we could talk about a lot of other things, but we're out of time here for today. And what I appreciate is that I, I from a technical point of view, I, I, these two did a killer job without being able to hear each other and pulling out and making sure and using phones and old tech. And uh, by the next time we do three, I'll have that all worked out, and uh, it'll be even better. But Eric, thank you so much for coming in. If you think of something that uh, I can send out to people, but if I wanted to contact you, please send me. Uh, do you want people who are on this? To, do you, you want to have 40 or 60 uh, emails come in over the next week? I see a few familiar names, so it'll probably be less than that. Okay. Uh, yeah, you, you can get me. It's it's pretty simple. Uh, it's E Black, E B L A C K, at Dreamscape, A B, like audiobook.com. Okay. And now, if they don't know you, would you recommend to them that they reference, hey, I saw you on the Heller Barnes thing? Sure, yeah. Don't be, like, you know, upset if I don't come back with poetry and everything. If it's if it's a quick, short one, it, probably because I have gotten more than I intended and I just want to get through. And uh, But, yeah, no okay. links. Or no, uh, no, links only. Links no attachments. Only. Links that. only. And, and <laughs> really lead with your best stuff as opposed to, me showing you 40 things and uh, and not get to the point early on because the reality is, I'm going to guess, if, if 20 people send you a message today, you're not going to have time to listen to all any of them. Uh, by the way, so here's a tip. If you ever go to a conference, don't send something to every the next day. I tend to wait about three to ten days and then send them a, hey, I met you type thing because I know they just get blown away by 400 people sending them a message the, the next day and then they have they have other work so they they can't get <laughs> to your message that same day if you're in the same flood so sometimes boy patience in this business can really really help and pay off uh, Johnny any any final closing thoughts mostly I, I don't know if you can hear me I want to thank Eric for joining us so so sweet of you to do this I'm looking forward to seeing both you guys and uh Gosh, in just a few weeks, a couple of weeks now, up in New England, it's going to be great. But thanks, thanks for this. Um, I'm hoping, Don, that we should um, we'll post it on on uh, all over the place. We'll probably do this next week, I think. Um, but thanks to Eric for being a part of this. It's so wonderful that you're ready and um, that you're there and able to uh, to join us and and people can ask you these questions. It's really wonderful of you. And I want you guys out there to realize you know, everybody's a person, yeah. you know. You gotta you gotta stop putting people on pedestals, otherwise you'll never be able to reach them. Yeah, so such good advice. All right, we're gonna see you all next week. If you have a comment, if you send us messages behind the scenes, uh, anything, and of course every week, just like the rest of you, you know, we're all getting better together. We're Johnny and I are doing this every week in order to help you help ourselves get better, get better, get better, get better. It just never ends as a performer. He'll never reach your potential. You may be better than me. You may be better than some of your other peers, but your potential is always going to be that little thing that's out of reach. And even Johnny still gets coaching. It always cracks me up. He still has somebody he uh, gets with to, to verify that things are going because he wants an outside perspective. If you ever need some help, you can contact Johnny. You can contact me, contact Eric. And also, you have a fantastic week. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye, all. Hi. Thanks, everyone. I heard Eric say bye. <laughs> oh, good. That's